In this video, we're going to show you all about file systems and paths. Particularly, we're going to focus on absolute and relative paths and how those work, particularly with the commands that we're going to be entering into our shell or into our terminal on Linux. So let's begin. First off, we need to be able to define what is a file system. And when I talk about a file system, I'm talking about how we interact with it as a user a file system. So a file system is nothing more than a bunch of files and folders that are organized a very specific way for your operating system. Right? And we're used to um, an image something like this where we interact with files and folders that we click on to be able to access our documents or our pictures or our music or our videos, whatever we have in our system. We're always interacting with these different files and folders. Now a few concepts we need to understand about this file system to and the way in which they're organized to better grasp what we're trying to do here. The first concept is we need to understand that folders can be inside of folders and everything actually starts from one folder. Right? It starts when Windows it starts with the C drive and then you have a bunch of folders. The C drive is a folder and then there are a bunch of folders within the C drive, right? And then within those folders, there are other folders. And within those folders, there are other folders. Linux is the same way. There is a root folder or directory, and it's called root, and it's a forward slash. And within that, that is a folder. It's a folder that is named, that is, the name of it is forward slash, but the forward slash we call root because it's the very top. It is the very first folder, right? So. When we normally use files and folders, we usually use a file manager. Um, in Windows, it's called F Windows Explorer. And we use that to manage our files and folders. We use it to drag and to drop and to move and to copy folders. Maybe we want to move an MP3 into our music folder or some image we took from our phone that we copied to our computer and we want to drag that to the pictures folder. Um, and this is what we use. We use dragging or dropping or we use cut and paste to be able to do that. Now in the command line, we can't drag and drop or cut and paste in the way that you're familiar with it. So we have to be able to do that another way, which is what we're going to talk about, right? So you have to be able to distinguish the location of the path, which we'll talk about here soon. So here is a very simplified um, comparison between Windows and Linux file system, right? So in Windows over here, you're used to the C drive. Again, that's why everything starts with the C drive. And then you maybe have your program files, then a Firefox folder, and then your Firefox executable. That is the location of your Firefox program, right? In Linux, it is slightly different but it still kind of uses this path and the structure of files and folders to be able to find things. In Linux, we don't have a C drive, but we have a forward slash, which is called root. And that is the first folder, which everything branches off from. Just like in Windows, everything branches off the C drive. And so if we want to get to the Firefox problem, we go to user, we go to bin, and then we got this Firefox SH. That is where the actual Firefox program is located at. Now, here's another simplified demonstration of the Windows file system. Everything starts at the top. That is called the root directory because everything starts from there and branches off from the C drive, right? But then of course we have other files and folders which branch out to other files and folders and so forth and so forth. Linux works the exact same way. Some of the names might be different, but it functions very similarly, right? We have a root directory. We do, and we call it root. We don't call it the C drive. We call it root, and what root is is forward slash, and it is the first forward slash, right? We do use other forward slashes as we go down between levels, which we'll talk about here in a second, but the first forward slash, everything starts with just a forward slash. And then it branches out to other folders and directories. So the first level is really forward slash, just like in Windows, C drive is the first level. Then you have another set of folders, more folders, and more folders, and so forth, 
and so forth. It's this upside down trees, the comparison where you have the roots of the tree at the top and all the branches and everything branching down. So it's this upside down tree type of layout. Now, let's talk specifically about a path. I have used that term path. Let's explore exactly what that is. Well, path is simply the location. Like you have all these files and folders. What is the location? How do I navigate? How does the system know where something is? How does it know where that MP3 file is or that document is? It needs to know the path on how to get there, right? So we let's say that you are W Adams and you have just logged into your system right here. So you are here. Well, what is that location of where I'm at on the system, right? Well, we start at the top. We start at, with a forward slash, right? This is how we write out the path or the location where we're at. So we always start at the top. Well, when we're using absolute paths, we always start at the top with a forward slash. Then we go, oh, we're at home. And then you do another forward slash to show that you're going down another level. And then you have W Adams. And that is my path. That is where I logged into. I logged into forward slash home forward slash W Adams. That is my path. Let's, let's try this again, right? What is the pathway? How do I get here to this public folder? Well, let's kind of go backwards, right? The public folder is inside the sysadmin folder. Now the sysadmin folder is inside the home folder and the home folder is inside the root folder, which is forward slash, right? So now we just have to work our way back down and list our path in order, right? So we have home, system admin, and public. Forward slash home, we go down another level, forward slash system admin, go down another level, forward slash path, right? Forward slash kind of has two purposes. The first forward slash is root, always indicating that you're starting here at the top. The next forward slash just indicates that you're going down a level. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about that. I'll reemphasize it here. Let's try another one. Now, I'm let's say we're here, right? And there's something, I know there's a file of some kind called something. I don't know what I'm going to call it. But again, we start at the top, forward slash user, forward slash sbin, forward slash whatever you're trying to access. In this instance, we have a file, I guess, called something, right? Here's another one. Start at the top, forward slash, go to Etsy, forward slash system. This is our path and our location. This is how we know where we are at on our system or where a file's located at or where MP3 is located at or where our picture's located at, right? Or our document. We have to have this location and it's written with these forward slashes and starting at the top, all the folders that get us down to where we need to go. Okay, now let's talk about absolute paths. You already kind of know about absolute paths because that's what we've been talking about. An absolute path is, is the full location or path of where something is located, whether you as a person are logged in and are that's your current working directory that you're currently working in, you're currently in the documents folder um, and you're moving things around or creating a document there or but it's the full location starting from the top from the root directory all the way down to where you're at so here we just did this one right forward slash etsy forward slash system d that's the absolute path it's from the top all the way down to where you're going right it is the full location we always start at root and work our way down when we're calculating an absolute path now why do we need to know these paths you've never like you've probably used windows for as long as you can remember and you never had to know these paths right well in the command line you don't have that luxury even if you're in the windows command line or using powershell you need to know the path to be able to dictate things like let's say you want to go look in the documents folder well how do you do that in the command line 
Well, you need to know the path or the location, right? Maybe you want to see where that MP3 player is or that MP3, or maybe you want to move an MP3. And so you have to give it a location of where it's at and where it wants to be moved to. So we use commands to be able to do that. So let's combine paths, this absolute path that we're learning with a command. So for instance here, we're going to be using the ls command to list what is in this folder. So we use the ls command and then we give it a path. If we, we can use the ls command by itself, but that will just show us what's in our current working directory, where we're currently at. But let's say we want to look, maybe I'm logged in as w Adams, and I want to see what's in user one. Now there are some permissions blocking that, preventing us from doing that, but in this scenario, let's pretend that those permissions aren't there. We can look and see what user one has, right? And all we have to do is type ls and then the path of where we want to look and see and list the files and folders that are there, right? Let's see another example here. Let's say we want to copy a file. Oh, we want to copy a this whatever file all the way over here to this include. Well, whatever is located over here and include is located over here and they're on completely different paths, right? The whatever file is, if I go down here, start at the top, home, W Adams, and then it's within the W Adams folder. And the include folder is like, you have to go back up and it's all the way over here in the user, down, and then over in include, right? So how do I do this? Well, let's walk you through step by step. Well, we're going to use the CP command to copy, right? But first thing we need to do is we need to tell it what do we want to copy. So we have to give it the path of what we want to copy. So the path of what we want to copy is the path to the whatever file. We start at the top, forward slash home, forward slash W Adams, forward slash whatever, which is the file we want to copy. Okay, now that we have what we want to copy, the third part of the command, right? We have the copy, which is the first part, the command itself. We have the path of what we want to copy and then where we want to copy it to. Well, we want to copy it to include. So we need the path of where we want to move it to. So forward slash user, forward slash include. That's where we want to move it, right? Let's look at another one. Let's look at the MV command or the move command, right? So again, we want to move whatever, but this time the whatever is in the system admin folder, right? System admin, whatever. And we want to move it to user one. Hmm. Well, first thing we want to do, if this is what we want to move, we first put the move command. Then we need to know the absolute path of this whatever file. Like where is this located? So that the system knows where it's located at and where you want to move it to, right? So let me show you some demonstrations here. All right. So we are used to just moving and navigating files through a graphical file manager application such as this. For instance, I have file one here, which is in home Jared temp and I can actually type file one up here that's the full location of this file one right where that's at that should just take me there anyways right here and actually it's gonna oh, try and open it up right but it's blank so that is the full location of this file right file one because file one is inside the temp folder all right now what I normally do in a graphical situation, if I want to take this file one, I can drag it and move it over into work. And now it's in work. Well, how can I test that? I can go into work. I can move into work. And now I'm in work, right? We can see our full path up here. And I can see that file one is located there. That worked out perfectly, right? Now, if I want to get back to the temp folder, I can hit the back arrow, the up arrow. I'm going to hit the up arrow because I'm going to go from work to temp. I'm going to go up a level and now I'm there, right? This is how we've been doing it graphically forever. So how do we do that exact same thing in the terminal using paths that we have currently learned, right? Our, our direct path. So I'm going to use absolute paths to do this. 
here's my terminal. And I'm first going to use the ls command to look and see what we got here, right? The ls command is similar to just me clicking on a file name, right? Um, I want to look in the temp folder. ls, oh, ls. This has the book. This has the book. This has file 2, file 2. It has a school folder. Well, this has a school folder right that's what the ls command is this is called my current working directory which we'll talk about here in a little bit as well so let's say i now want to copy file 2 to my work folder let's see what i need to do here right so i'm going to do the copy command and i'm going to do file 2 whoops the full path and what's the full path well i can look over here the full path of file 2 is home, Jared, temp, file 2. That is the full path. See, I can see the full path here, file 2, right? Now I have to give it the full path. So this is what I want to copy. I have the copy command, what I want to copy. Now I need the full path of where I'm going to copy it to. And this is going to wrap around a little bit because I'm running out of space here. Let's see if I can make my terminal a little bigger. But it's in home, Jared, temp, work. Let me go ahead and hit enter. Boom. If I didn't get an error or anything, if, if I didn't get some error, I must have done it right, right? So how can I look and see that I was actually able to make a copy of file 2 in the work folder? Well, let, I can use the ls command. The ls command will list this. So I'm just going to, I can actually just copy and paste it here if I want to. Copy it like that. So I'm going to list and show me what is in this folder. Oh, there's file 2. And there's file one that we did graphically, right, earlier before. So I can now see that file two was successfully copied. I still have a copy here in my temp folder. And I have a copy of it here in my work folder. But this is the full path location of it, right? Let's try this again, right, and do it a, a little bit differently. We're going to use the PW D command present working directory because that's going to help us out a little bit as to describe our location of things right so pwd shows me my current path and location notice this is the same thing that i have up in here now your file manager particularly if you're working in windows and even in linux some of these file managers they like to hide this path back in the olden days i mean i'm talking back like windows 98 95 2000 uh, maybe XP did it I don't remember they started to hide the path and the location up here and they would just put something else there they just put temp or something like that in there right to show you that you're in the temp folder um, I don't know why they started hiding that because it's uh, I think caused a lot of confusion for new users who ha didn't have to do this the old-fashioned way right um, but when you're in the terminal, you absolutely need to have that. So here I'm using a file manager that allows me to do that. And I think in Windows, if you click up in there, it will show it for you as well in your own file manager in Windows and show you the actual true full path location. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to move this file to to my school folder. So how do I do go about doing that? Well, the first thing is, is I know the school folder is right here and it's in my temp. So it's just another level down, right? If I look here, it's just another level down. So this is the full path, right? So it's just temp folder forward slash. I would put school right here at the end. So I can type PWD and I see that it's right here where I'm currently at. It's relative to where, where I'm at. So I... Um, Let's say I want to move in there. Well, I said I was going to copy the file to folder. So let's do that. So I'm going to actually move the file this time. I'm not going to copy. I know I said copy. And I'm going to put the full location 
a file to, which is just, I'm going to use my current working directory, home, Jared, temp, forward slash, file to, because it's in the temp folder. So I'm going to do, I'll copy and paste this because it's easier, quicker, right? And then I'm going to put forward slash, file to. Okay, so this is what I want to move. Now, where do I want to move it to? I want to move it to the school folder. So I'm going to use the full path. And guess what? I can partially use this. And I can just paste that there, right? Because these are in the same folder. These are both in the temp folder, right? So I can do this and I can put school there. Let me see if I can make this bigger so it doesn't wrap around. So it looks a little bit better. And there we go. I have move. I have what the file, the location, the full location of the file I want to move and where I want to move this file to. Now if I hit enter, and as long as I don't get an error, it should have happened. Well, how can I tell if it happened? Well, let's do something. Let's move into, before I can just type the ls command and give the path of it, right? Well, let's do something different. Let's actually move into the school folder. So I'm going to use the cd command, change directory. I want to change into a new working folder. So I want to change, and then I give the path of where I want to change to. And now this kind of gives you a shortened version of where I'm at in my prompt. And I can type pwd, and pwd just gives me my current location. So I'm in the school folder. I'm in Jared home, that whole pathway down. And I can just type the ls command here without giving a path. And it should just show me what is in the school folder that I'm currently in. Oh, there's file two. It worked. So how do I get back now to my temp folder? Oh, well, I can use the cd command, right? cd, and then I tell it where I want to go. I want to go here. I don't want to go back into school. That would just be in the same place. I want to go back up one. So I'm going to leave school off and I just want to go back here to this temp and I'm going to give the full path of it. And I can do PWD and I'm here. See, previously I was in the school folder. There's the full path. Now I'm in back to my temp folder. See, just tell it the location, what you want to move. So when we want to move files, copy files, list files, list what's in a folder, move, this is how we do it on the command line. We use paths and we have to really understand paths to be able to really understand how to use these commands, right?